views. Even though we were grown, even though we were away from home, the coach said you had to be in the dorm by 10 o'clock. You practice all day. You're running. You're sweating. You had to study. And you probably want to go and see your boo. Is there anybody in this house? You know, you, you had a girlfriend and you wanted to go and see her. But, but because the practices were so long and you had to go to film practice, you had to go to film reviews. And, and, and at, by the time you got out of that, you, 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 you were tired. But he says you have to be there by 10 o'clock. And then they would send coaches to see if you were in the dorm. And some wouldn't deny themselves because they want to be slick. And there ain't nobody in the house. They, they'll have the roommate cover for you. Y'all looking at me like y'all ain't never did nothing like that. And if you didn't make it by curfew time because you knew we didn't roll down hills, we rolled up hills. Is there anybody, if you ever been to the Dust Bowl, you had to come down the hill. Well, you had to roll up the hill sideways if you were caught after curfew. Because you didn't deny yourself. You had to go and see her. Is there anybody in this house? You, you, you had to go do some things in, in terms of making sure that you pleased yourself. And the coach said you need to be in the room by 10 o'clock. You had to deny yourself. You had to deny yourself in terms of how you treated your body. Couldn't feed yourself everything. Couldn't eat everything. You had to be disciplined. You had to take care of the body. You had to go to the gym. You had to go to the weight. You had to do everything. You had to take care of your cardiovascular system because if the game got long in the fourth quarter, you had to be one who was going to suck it up, as they used to say. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And if you were out of condition, you would give out a gas in the second quarter. Because you didn't deny yourself. You have to take care of the body. Then you have to accept the role you will play. Everybody wasn't a starter. But you could have been a starter in high school. As a matter of fact, you could have been an All-American. But when you get to college, everybody is all this and all that. Is there anybody in this house? Everybody got trophies. They bring their newspaper clippings and they began to go through them. That's the way that you get to know one another. And what they began to do is to start strategy. They start putting little classes. He's an All-American. He's an all-conference. Oh, he don't have as many, so he's going to take, and they're going to, he's going to take my shoes. He's going to wash my clothes. You're at the bottom. They, they, they began to use a, 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 a class system to determine where you would fall. All right. And I wasn't that big, y'all. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't that tall. But I still had to go through the denying process. Right. Yeah. I had to go to three a days. Is there anybody in this house? I was placed on the third string, not the first string. That was the, 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 the line that, that wasn't as good. Is there anybody here know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah. And there were some times that I just felt like telling the coach, I ain't doing this. Have you ever been in a situation where you wanted to tell some people what you weren't going to do? There are some people who would tell some people what they weren't going to do. Is there anybody in this house? But there was a, an attitude that you had to deny yourself and you had to accept the role you would play regardless of whether you was an All-American, All-By-City, whatever the situation may have been, you had to accept the role that you were going to play. You had to deny your will for the coach's will. In the second area, there, there, we had to deny our way for the coach's way. Yeah. Coach Davis would tell you, say, it's going to be my way or the highway. Coach Sism and Coach Davis had never met each other. And that's exactly the same message 
that Cosism said when there were about 40 of us who were freshmen coming in, but he said, you're going to accept my way or the highway. And we had one of the biggest recruiting classes. And he says, there are going to be some of y'all that's going to leave at night because you don't want to accept my way. He said, don't worry about those. You just keep on sleeping and just let those just go on about their business because you're going to have to deny your way of wanting to do it your way. And so, he says, you're going to have to deny yourself. There was one young man who I remember very vividly. He was recruited by Alabama. He was probably one of the greatest running backs that would have come through Anniston, Alabama. And he had a tremendous style of running. He was quick. But he also had power. He was a freshman. He was an All-American. But he came with an attitude. Mm, yeah. And he thought that he was all of that in a bag of chips. He wouldn't speak to nobody. He thought he was better than everybody. He thought that he could automatically go into the starting line. Mm. Until things began to come to a reality. Because there were seniors that had played there for at least four years. They were all Americans. They were being looked at by pro scouts. And this one person thought that he was better than them. And so he wanted to do it his way. And he would tell the coach what he was going to do and what he wasn't going to do. And the coach says, here's what you need to understand, son. You can either do it my way or you can pack up your bags and you can go on back home. To this day, he's still in Anniston, Georgia. Because, uh, Anniston, Alabama, because he could not do it the coach's way. The only thing I'm trying to let us know today, Jesus says in verse 23, he says, Then he too. To them all. This is what he said to the multitude. If anyone desires to come after me. Look at what he says. Let him deny himself. What is he saying? He's saying if you're going to come after me. There are some things that you're going to have to put down. Is there anybody in this house? You can't keep doing the same old thing. You can't keep serving in the lottery line, showing up in the lottery line. You can't keep going to the dog track. You can't keep, come on somebody, chasing after this and chasing after that. If you truly want to be my disciple, there are some things you have got to deny yourself. You have to deny your will. Because he says, if any person be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. All things pass away and all things become new. I cannot say that I'm a follower of Christ doing the same old thing and doing the same thing in the same old way. That's what the immature Christian does. The immature Christian says that I know that I'm saved, but yet there's no evidence of their salvation. There is no commitment to doing it his will. That's why Jesus, when he was going to the cross, he stopped over in Gethsemane. He says, not thy will, but thine be done. So I just come by to ask you to ask yourself the question, are you doing it for the love of Christ? Are you denying? yourself because you've come to understand how much Christ loves you are you doing it because Christ gave his life for you what is the motive for denying yourself and picking up your cross daily let me just say about this cross because there's so much confusion about what the cross is some people think the cross is wearing it around your neck. That's not the cross. Some people think financial problems is the cross. That's not the cross. 
A matter of fact, that's your crop. Because you go and not you, but I'm speaking in generality, is that you go and you basically take a credit card that's going to charge you 23% and you're going to spend and spend and spend. That's why a friend of mine and I was talking, he said, Johnny, he says, there's going to be some real difficult times in January. And I said, why would you say that? He said, because those purchases that were made in October, November, and December, they're going to come to roost in January. Is there anybody? in this house the crop will come and it will yield 23% and you got people who are saying that I can't pay my bill I can't pay my tithe because they've spent because they would not deny themselves because they had to do what pleased them the cross is being willing to to suffer for the cause of Christ. And I know that's not a good message for some people because there's some people who look at this like the unsaved person. The unsaved person, the reason that he or she will not give their life to Christ is because they believe that they're not going to have, they're not going to be able to have fun anymore. Have you heard people say that? If I give my life to Christ, I can't do, keep doing what I'm, I was doing. I keep, can't keep going to the club. Can't, can't, can't keep going to the lottery and Biloxi and Los you know, can't keep doing what pleases me can't keep drinking the Cavassier and is there anybody in this house I can't I can't keep chasing come on somebody is there anybody in the house I can't keep lying I can't keep cheating so I, I, I just want to keep doing what pleases me so so the unsaved person continues to come in and out of the church and will not give their life to Christ because they got everything confused because they believe that in order to be able to be a Christian, you've got to be perfect. And he says you just have to be willing to surrender. You have to be, to be willing to surrender to the will, the way, and the word of God. And he says, and become an available vessel that I may use you, set you aside, and I may sanctify you, that I may use you to glorify me, that you will be willing to do it my will. You exchange your will for my will. And all oh, my brothers and sisters, the unsaved person is not willing to do that particularly if they have not been convicted, converted, and compelled to come. Because there are many people who come and join the church, but they have not given their life to Christ. Is there anybody in this house? That's why they keep doing it their way. Is there anybody in the house? They keep trying to please themselves, and they keep trying to say that I can keep doing what I want to do, but I love God. I, he's heard my cry and pitied my every groan, but they keep on doing it their way. God is saying, Come on, preach up. Yes. I'm going to keep doing it in my will so that the love of God yes. can go from me to you and to others. So he says that if you're going to follow him, All right. you have to deny. The evil desires, the evil affections, and the evil lust that would cause you to be drawn away from him. But then he says you must do it his way. Yeah. And my brothers and sisters, there are two ways. There's the wide road and there's the narrow road. And you have to ask yourself, which one are you traveling? Because he says the wide road, everybody want to go down that road. Everybody want to go down the wide road because everybody is traveling. It's just like being in Corinth. Everybody want to go to Corinth just like everybody want to go to Las Vegas. Everybody want to go to Vegas like everybody want to go to Biloxi. Everybody want to go to Biloxi. Everybody want to go the wide road. No one wants to really go the narrow road. Because the narrow road requires commitment. That's why leaders, when you stand and you take the vow, you take the pledge, you're saying, I commit not to Reverend Flakes, but you're saying you commit to God. You commit his way. It is not.
not my way. Time is not yours. Is there anybody in this house? It's his time and he wants you to deny yourself so that he can use you in a way that would make a difference in this congregation, that would make a difference within this community, that would make a difference within this city. It's not about us, but it's all about him. Anybody understand that it's his time? Young people, please understand it's not your time. It's his time. And if you're going to do it his way, he says there must be a commitment. There must be a sacrifice. And there were times when I wanted, I didn't want to show up to practice. But I was committed to what I had the opportunity and the privilege to do in representing Columbus High and representing Tuskegee. I was committed. And every time we had to be there by 5.30 in the morning, Coach Sism say, we'll see who's really committed. Because you have to deny your sleep time. You have to let the clock come on somebody. You're not getting up at 5.30. You had to be at practice at 5.30. So that meant you had to get up at 4.30, is there anybody, and if you're slow, you have to get up at, come on somebody, 4 o'clock. Is there anybody in this house, some of you know about PT in the army, don't you? If they say you got to be there at 5 and you got to be trotting by 5.30, you don't show up at no 5.45. You need to get there early because the coach always knew who was really committed because you get there way before time. And we have to have the same spirit when it comes to witnessing, when it comes to serving God. He says, you have to understand it's my time. It's not your time to decide what you're going to do with it. You have to do it my way. And then you have to do it with humility. You can't think that you're better than anybody else. God desires that we be humble. And it doesn't matter how high you accomplish. doesn't matter how many accolades that you may get. It doesn't matter how many titles that you may receive. But he says, humble is the way. And if you need an, if you need an illustration, the only thing you have to do is to go over to John 13. When Jesus was sitting in the upper room and he was about to go to Calvary, he sat down with the 12 disciples and he knew Judas was going to betray him. Is there anybody in this house? He knew that Judas was going to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. He knew that Peter was going to deny him three times. And he knew the disciples was going to abandon him. But yet, this is what he did. He says, now I'm going to be entrusting the ministry to you. Peter, you said you'll die for me. Peter, you said you'll be with me no matter where I go. And he knew Judas was going to sell him out. But yet, he washed their feet. Now, don't get confused about the feet washing because that word was not the real issue there. He was talking about humility. This is how you serve. If I am God in flesh, if I'm the master, if the master can bow and wash feet, why can't you? And every time you treat your husband right, you're washing Christ's feet. Is there anybody in this house? He said, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. Every time you speak a kind word to your wife, is that right? You're washing feet. You're, you're washing feet not because of literally, but you are being humbled. I have the right to say things and I have the right to do things, but you give up your right for their wrong. And my brothers and sisters, if you're not doing it that way, you're not denying yourself. And you, you're you not denying yourself to follow Christ. And then you have to ask yourself, am I really a true disciple of Christ? Because disciples are learners. They're followers of the Lord because he's the one that controls and guides my life by way of the Holy Spirit. I surrender all to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's no longer about me. I do it for the love of God. Through Jesus the Christ. We don't just start something. That was one of the things Coach Sism would always tell us. Don't start something and then quit. Because he would always tell us. If you quit this. When it comes to life you'll quit that. When times get rough. When times get hard. If you start practicing quitting now. You'll always quit when things get rough. Is there any 
body in this house. You have to do it Christ's way. And I thank God through Jesus Christ that he taught his disciples not to quit. Is there anybody here? He knew in that upper room that the disciples was going to leave him. He knew that he was going to be sold out for 30 pieces of silver. He knew that Peter was going to deny him three times and yet he still went to the cross. That's why I love him that he stopped on his way to the cross and he went into the garden of Gethsemane and he told the inner circle, Peter, James, and John, he says, you watch and you pray because the devil is always lurking. But while I go into the inner parts of the Gethsemane, you watch and pray. Don't quit on me. The Bible says when Jesus prayed the first time, if this cup can pass from me, let it pass. Then he went and checked on his disciples and guess what they were doing? They were sleeping. Is there anybody in the house? And he kept waking them up and said, wake up, watch, and, and pray. Went back a second time and he prayed, if this cup can pass from me let it pass and the Bible says he went back and checked on his disciples and they kept sleeping but he allowed them to keep sleeping and he went back the third time and he bowed down on his knees and he said father if this cup can pass from me let it pass and the Bible says he says not my will but thy will be done and Jesus could have quit right then in there he could have given up on his disciples and the Bible says once he began to sweat like blood dropping the angel came and ministered unto him but the bible says that after he left the garden of Gethsemane he went out with the disciples and here come a old betraying Judas and the bible says that Judas came with some other Roman soldiers his motive was not pure and Jesus said to Judas you have to turn over to Matthew 26 and read verse 50 to see how Jesus responded to Judas because he was doing it the way of the Father. And when Judas came up, he says, Friend, what does thou have to do with me? me but I just wonder if you realize that there were those who was going to sell you out you realize there were those who were stabbing you in the back you realize those who didn't have your best interest at heart I wonder how you would respond to them but if you're truly denying yourself you will do it like Jesus because you're doing it for the love of God through Jesus to Christ you know what the unsaved person would do if they found out somebody were really mistreating them the unsaved person will give them a piece of their mind call them everything but a child of God probably curse them out and probably want to go fist to fist but that's not denying yourself and the reason that the unsaved person would not deny themselves because they do not have a spiritual connection with God through Jesus Christ and the controlling power of the Holy Spirit I wonder what the immature Christian how the immature Christian would respond well let's look at it the immature Christian Christian finds out that another person been talking about them and yet they thought that they were their brothers and sisters in Christ another person on their job they find out that they were a little deceiving they were applying for the same job and during the interview they put them 
down and then they find out that the person had been spreading rumors on them the immature Christian even though they said that they believed in Jesus Christ but the immature Christian when they found out that it was this certain person that immature Christian would want to give them a piece of their mind the immature Christian want to put them in their place the immature Christian want to possibly show them that you don't mess with me and I want you to know if you keep on doing what you're doing you're gonna have to answer to me I got my come on somebody I got my way of getting back on you vengeance is not gone but the immature Christian says if you keep on doing it vengeance is gonna be mine the immature Christian hasn't deny themselves they're not doing it the way that God through Jesus Christ has illustrated it to them but let's look at the maturing Christian they find out the same thing about the same person but because they believe they're under the power of the Holy Spirit they find out that person has really hurt them to the core of their heart they have every right to tell that person off they have every right to get that person straight but because of their denying themselves they believe they have to give up their right for somebody else's wrong so that person the immature Christian says I'm gonna pray for you I'm gonna pray that the Lord delivers you because I have come to understand that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I believe for God if he's for me who can be against me. Bless the Lord at all times. I will continue to allow the praises of God to come out of my mouth so I'm going to praise God that he counts me worthy of denying myself I'm going to pick up my cross and if he could suffer I could suffer if they lied on him I count it worthy that he they could lie on me if they treated him mean I count it worthy that they could mistreat me so I I just have to understand that God is a good God. I have to do it His way. I have to be in His will. I don't go quit my job. I don't go fight no my job. I don't let nobody run me off of my job because I've come to understand I have His peace that surpasses all understanding. I trust in the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my soul. And the Bible says, do unto others as you have them do unto you. Love, love your neighbor as yourself. And the Lord will be glorified. And I'm so glad that that's my reasonable worship. But I'm glad that Jesus, when he saw Judas, he asked Judas, friend, what does you have to do with me? Have you asked that person, friend, I want you to know you hurt me, friend, you disappointed me, friend. You come on somebody You made me feel So disappointed But I'm not going to give Satan His due I'm going to shout That God get glory You're not going to get Come on somebody The victory I'm not going to quit 
because Jesus didn't quit on me. Can't you see Jesus going to the cross? He picked up that cross for you and he picked up the cross for me. He denied himself because he says I'm not going to quit on the Father. I'm not going to quit on him. I'm not afraid to die. I came to this earth to die. That's why we have to be willing to be inconvenienced. That's why sometimes I wonder why so many people, they complain about being inconvenienced by the church. And I just come by to tell you, he didn't save you to make you comfortable. A matter of fact, he saved you to inconvenience you. That's the litmus test. Will I allow God to inconvenience me? I'll serve you even if it's inconvenience me. I'll love even if it's inconvenience me. I'll show mercy even if it inconvenience me. He went to a hill called Calvary denying himself. He continued to think about you. He continued to think about you. And there he is on Calvary's cross denying himself for his father. And he prayed a prayer. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They lifted him high, stretched him wide. He kept denying himself. He kept praying for you. Kept praying for the Roman soldier who put nails in his hands. Kept praying for the Roman soldiers who spit on him. Kept praying for Peter because he denied him three times. If I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. I'll draw all men, women, boys, and girls unto me. He gave his hands to the nails, gave his feet to the nails, denying himself. He had the power to shed a tear. He could have washed away all of the earth, but he denied himself. He had the power to call down a legion of angels, but he denied himself to suffer the death on the cross. Anybody know he died on that Friday between the sixth to the ninth? Power denying himself, he died on that Friday, locked his head in his shoulder gave up the ghost. He wants you to continue to deny yourself, crucify yourself, mortify yourself, kill yourself, not literally, but kill the selfishness, the self-centeredness, just thinking about you. He died. Anybody know he died? He died on that Friday, but I'm so glad Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus went to Pilate, requested his body, put him in a bar tomb. That Friday evening, he stayed there all Friday night, denying himself because he could have got up before the third day. But because the promise had been made, he will be raised on the third day. He denied himself, stayed there Saturday. All Saturday night, but I'm so glad. Early, early, early Sunday morning, the Bible says he was raised from the dead with all power, all power in his hands, resurrection power, freeing power, reconciliation power. All power in his hands. If you know what I'm talking about, you ought to say amen. 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 He did it because he loved the Father. His motive for going to that cross, being raised from the dead, is because he loved you he loved me the motive was his love 
to demonstrate the Father's love. And if you are here, you've been saved. The question that I ask you, why are you doing it? Leaders, why are you doing it? Those who aspire to be leaders, why will you do it? It has to be the love of God through Jesus the Christ. Because if not, I'll keep trying to do it in my will. And I'll try and do it my way. And God will not get the glory. But if you do it in his will, you do it his way. And you know his word. To God be the glory. For all that he has done, all that he will do through you. But if you're not saved, you'll keep trying to do it your way. And he says, deny yourself, deny your fear, deny you, and pick up the cross and follow me. And the first thing you have to do is be willing to accept him as your Savior, Lord. You have to be willing to step out on his word and believe that he is who he say he is. He's God in flesh, the incarnate son of God. And you have to know how much he loves you that moves you to come and receive him as your personal Savior and Lord. Deny yourself and come and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe you're here because of a military reassignment. Maybe you're here because of a job relocation. Maybe you're here because you're matriculating through one of the colleges, one of the universities in Phoenix City, Harris County, or maybe Muskogee. You are here, and you're not here by happenstance. Maybe you're here because God has destined it to be. The question is, will you deny yourself and receive Jesus today? Will you deny yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to move you to come and unite here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church? Where he can use you. That you can become a part of his body. Transformed, changed. That we do not produce quitters on Christ. But we produce committed Christians. We produce Christians with Christian character. We produce Christians with Christian conviction. So wherever you go. You can glorify him. You can worship him which is your reasonable service that means it's not hard it's not inconvenient but you will do it because you say you love him because you've come to understand the depth of his love for you and nobody have to make you do anything nobody have to make you feel guilty nobody have to make you feel as though that it's legalism or you're in bondage but he says you must desire to follow him and if you desire to be used by him, won't you come today? Whether you're young, whether you're a teenager, middle-ager, whether you're a golden ager, you still can be used by God. He desires that you be used. Will you become available to accept him today? If you're a family, you've been looking and you've been going and you've been searching. Why don't you allow the Holy Spirit to end your search today? Why don't you step out with boldness and confidence under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and come and reunite here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. If you want to rededicate your life to Christ, if you want to recommit your life to Christ, won't you come today in the name of Jesus? Unashamed, unembarrassed, will you come? On my left, if you're here, will you come? For God desires to use you. He says, I've allowed you to be entrusted with my resources. And I want you to be a good steward for me. But you can't be a good steward unless you have a relationship. Will you come today? Will you come today? Will you do it his way? In his will? In the center, will you come today? Will you respond?